<laughs> Hi guys, how's everybody tonight? Mr. Willow Way. <laughs> so tonight we will be doing an interview with Rick at Welcome to My Cape Cod Life. Um, we will be waiting for him to join us. And I posted a link, so hopefully he'll be able to join via the link. Um, I don't know if I've ever had anybody up with me on Restream before or not, so we'll just see how this goes. <laughs> Hi, sweetheart. How are you? Did Jason tell you that I called you guys a couple of days ago just to see how you guys were doing? May have been more than a couple of days. My days kind of run together. But Rick is going to join us for kind of an interview tonight. So um, we'll be doing that. Um, this week, Jeff got a whole bunch of uh, his 3D printed herb strippers made. Um, I got some uh, bath salts made. I don't have them uh, tamper proofed or labeled yet because I just got these made last night. Um, but these uh, smell really good. And like if you've got a really bad headache, you can put them in your bath water with you and the smell of them will kind of help ease your headache. So I got those done, and then I got some more of my headache aromatherapy things done. And if there was something else, because what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be do oh, the bath mills. They're kind of similar to a. Um, hey Laura, how are you doing? Um, they're kind of similar to a bath bomb but they're not the they don't have the power of the bath bomb but these also have a scent in them that is uh very soothing and stuff for a headache and so i'll be doing a huge headache box it'll have tons of stuff in it to help relieve headaches if i get headaches a lot so but hi jason Jason and Laura and Beth. Make sure I'm not missing anybody. Nope. We're just waiting for Mr. Rick to join us. I'm sure he'll get the notification before too long. Doing good, hon. Doing good. Um just making products and Getting ready for vendor market season and um, more products for the Etsy store, you know, all that good stuff. There he is. Okay, Rick, if you scroll up, there will be a link, not the one to your channel, but the very first thing I posted, if it'll let you scroll up that far. If it doesn't, let me know and I will repost the link for you. I know, I know, my hubby, I know. <laughs> Do you see the link at the top, Rick? <laughs> Hi, honey. <laughs> I'll post it again, Rick, just in case. Nope, never mind. There he is. All right, there you are. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi. How are you, hon? All right. Let me just 
do this. No, this. All right, I can't see the chat though. Okay. But I'm on my phone, so that might be why. Oh, what's that? Let's see if that helps at all. Probably not. No one's talked yet, so there it goes. I see somebody said hi, Rick. Somebody. Yeah. If you need me to, I can switch to StreamYard if that would be better. Um, if somebody asks something, you'll have to tell me because I might be able to see it. There's something on the right hand side. So, okay. Oh, there's people. Mm -hmm. Hi, people. Thanks, Laura. Yeah. Uh, Jason uh, Ilkinaram says, Yo, Rick. Yeah, I'm seeing that in very tiny letters. <laughs> and Laura said that she had to go. But she shared us out. Oh, thanks. So how are you doing? How are things up in Cape Cod? Cape Cod's fine. It actually was kind of spring-like today. It was, I think, yeah. 55. I went to go see Mom off Cape. She lives. She doesn't live on Cape Cod. So I spent the early afternoon with her and came home and hung out with the chickens. <laughs> So you, you've got stuff started for a garden inside yeah, I've been or working outside? on that. What's that? It's, the stuff That's is stuff. mostly started inside my seedlings. I mean, like I have garlic in the ground and, you know, perennials. And I was out there kind of cleaning up the beds. I have some lettuce that actually wintered over. So that should be going. Who's that? Hi. I don't know. I don't know why he said that, but. Oh, I check. Okay. Um, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, spring started. It's been you know it's been taking too long. It's been yes. cold and raw. Oh, our chickens have been stepping up production a bit, is what he said. Oh, got it. Got it. Yeah, today five out of the eight. I was happy. So, awesome. Yeah, I mean, they did good. How many chickens do you have? I have eight. Eight chickens? Yeah, yeah, this yeah. is enough. Uh, well, how many garden uh, beds do you have? How many garden beds? Um, I got like different kinds. I think a total of 13. But, you know, some of them are small, some of them are large. I have six four by eight i have four that are just like 36 inch circles and then i have five that i think are like just over four feet by two feet and then i have grow bags and pots and all of that so you do container gardening too besides the yeah. oh, and i have a couple of green stocks as well oh wow Yes. Yeah. What do you? What all do you plan on growing this year? Oh, all this Anything thing. new? Ah, it's a new. Well, it's a new varieties. I'm sure there's something new. It's not coming to me now. There's always something new because I'm too <laughs> curious. Definitely, I always try like new varieties of tomatoes. Um, let's see, some of the new ones this year would be like Granny Cantrells. A lot of people talk about those. I never did an Ace 55, so I'm doing some of those. I'm going to have a lot of new ones. Um, I do uh, greens, Asian greens. I'm going to do some Napa cabbage. I realized I never grew Napa cabbage before. Oh, wow. Yeah, I knew is some cow peas. I'm going to do some cow peas. There you uh, go. I don't know if you uh, ever watch Roots and Refuge, but she had like this local <laughs> variety. It's um, chicken dumpling peas. And the guy who works for her was selling some. So I'm like, oh, yeah, I'll get some of those. And I got a new kind of okra that was just local to that area. And it's actually, they had like an interesting story because I guess during the Civil War, 
if you were in dating, you would like wreck their fields and smash their seeds and, you know, to make people submit to the armies. And those two varieties they believe were like rode ahead of the armies and, you know, they went and hit them somewhere. And that's how they say those varieties. Wow. Yeah, so it's, it's kind of cool. So the Yankees cool. taking some up north and seeing if we can like grow a few extra there. <laughs> mm -hmm. That is really cool. Uh, Jason said that he's going to be using cat food bags for grow bags this year. Oh, okay. He said, call me cheap. I don't mind. <laughs> you know, two years ago, I got those giant Ikea shopping bags. And I put holes in the bottom of those, and they worked really well. Good. Um, yeah, I'm cheap, too. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Do you it, have any other animals besides your chickens? No, no. I mean, I, my farm is a backyard, so. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, I would like to maybe do meat chickens. Um, so maybe next year. I was thinking maybe this year, but I haven't gotten any of the infrastructure or figured it out. I like to use, like, um, electric fence and, like, one of those rolling, you know. Yeah. Chicken shaws. They have a lot of needs for them, but and just keep move, moving them throughout the yard. I just don't know if I have enough space to do it that way so they could get through and always be on fresh grass. Well, right. fresh, I, my lawn is really a meadow. It's so full of weeds and everything, but I don't care. Um, <laughs> and you know what? The rabbits don't really, they the rabbits eat all that stuff and they leave my flowers and my, well, I had to fence them out of my garden. Otherwise they'd be happy to eat that. But. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you live, how far away is the ocean from you? Um, I can be there in like, I'm sure I could be on the beach in about eight minutes drive. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it really is a kind of a skinny peninsula. Um, so yeah, it doesn't take long at all to go to the beach. When I go clamming, I think that's probably like a 12 minute ride that particular beach. It's a little farther out. They're everywhere. Um, when you go clamming, uh, is it like a seasonal thing or can you just pretty much go down there and clam anytime? Okay, so yeah, you can go year round, at least in my town. Each town has their own um, rules and regulations. My town, it's year round for the clams. Oyster has a season oysters and scallops are from november to the end of march and then they're closed for the rest of the year um it's all about conservation making sure that they're, they're going to be there for a while but clams and i can get those year round i have to go on certain days so it's saturdays sundays wednesdays and holidays are the days you can go Unless oh, nice. you're Native American, they can go anytime they want. If they, right. unless they have their tribal card, which is cool. Right. Um, okay, so the oysters and scallops, are those dug or how are they, how do you get those? All right, so oysters, natural oysters will kind of make almost like a reef. Reef? No, reef but not like coral reefs. They just like grow together in clusters naturally. But our town also propagates them. So aquaculture is a real big business around here. People grow clams and oysters and whatnot, basically in wire baskets and you can get grants and you know, get an acre of um, wow. basically <laughs> land underwater and do it. And it's a lot of work though. Um, but the town grows some oysters because they have the beaches, they have the resources to do it. And then when they're ready and it's oyster season, they just throw them on the beach. And I know they do it in just kind of like in the intertidal area. So at least once, you know, the high tide will cover it. But when low tide is, they're just in shallow water then. Um, so huh. some years ago. Huh? Oh, scallops are a little trickier because 
scallops actually can swim. They're kind of like jet propelled. They actually open and they swim around and they have like 32 blue eyes when they're slightly open. Um, so people usually use like a glass bottom box to locate them and then they'll net them. And that's the base scallop. The bigger ones like the diver scallops, you have to go out deep and either dredge or literally die for them. Um, oh, wow. Every once in, yeah, once in a while, you know, I find a couple of little base scallops and I'll take them home. You have to, they have to be their second ear. They have like a, a ring. So you can't take first year scallops. Huh. Because they need, they only live two years, the little ones in, in the bay anyways. And so to give them the chance to keep reproducing, we you can only take them on the second year. Now your life is so interesting to me because I just, I love the ocean. I love seafood and I just, I love that, you know. Do you ever, you know, do like your own, like little crabbing, you know, like, I don't know, go out and crabbing? Yeah, so go we have blue crabs up, for, yeah. up this way. So we have, and rock crabs, like, or Jonah crabs, peaky toe crabs. Those are usually out deeper, but blue crabs, I, I'll go get them. You do the chicken necking method, you know, you tie it. A chicken neck or usually a drumstick on a string throw it out and when that string goes taunt you know you have one and you just slowly bring them in and they like want to hold on to that and you scoop under and you get one and wow yeah and they have to be a certain size they have to be i think it's five and quarter inches from the one tip to the next they're you really have like different. the special tool like they show like on deadliest catch where you have to put that tool over them and if they fit Inside I, that tool, they I have a have stick with them. a line, <laughs> very low tech <laughs> here. <laughs> it's actually an old tomato pole <laughs> that I just measure the line, and, but I actually use grill tongs to hold them because crabs live up to their name, they're crabby, <laughs> they're very <laughs> honorary, especially the blue crabs, they'll fight you, you know. So, um so I use tongs and I measure and then they go into the basket. <laughs> that is so awesome. Uh, living where you live, do you have a problem with like the salt water and the ground and stuff that you grow in? No. Is that why you have to, no? no the ground no. stuff is salty and stuff for some of the stuff you Even in? close to the ocean, it's not that bad. You know, launcher or higher up than yeah, should, you know, during like really bad windstorms, like, you know, like little hurricanes, you can get a lot of like sea spray that gets carried and they'll wreck the trees for a short while, but they recover. And it doesn't really salt the land all that much. But we're a sandbar, so even if it did, it just drains away, you know. Right. We're, literally, if I dig in my ground, there isn't. There's a half an inch of topsoil, and then it's gravel and rocks. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, so. I mean, some of the properties obviously have, you know, the topsoil and all of that, but uh, the house I was, I live in, I think it was built in 69. So it's, it's not a particularly old property, but I mean, you got sea captain homes and, uh, there's a lot of expensive real estate on Cape Cod. Yeah. Um, how far away are, are you from Martha's Vineyard? That's the closer of the two islands. So if I was going to go, I'd take a half an hour ride down to Falmouth, and I think it's maybe a 40-minute um, wow. ferry ride. Nantucket is like, on the slow boat, it's like two hours. On the fast boat, I think it's... 45 minutes. He says, crab meat on a baked potato with bacon bits and ranch dressing sounds good right about now. Mm, I don't know. I might skip the ranch, but yeah. Crab cakes. I just, crab cakes is probably my favorite thing to do with those guys. 
I want that sandwich that you made last year. The lobster okay. roll? Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> yeah, I happen to um, eat a lot of those during the year. <laughs> oh my gosh, uh, that looked amazing. A lot of our lobsters come from Canada or Maine, but I do know a local lobster guy, so I'm connected. Oh, that is awesome. Yeah, yeah. So you do a lot of uh, traveling? Not as much as I want. It's mostly to go meet up with uh, family. You know, my son, lo son lives in Texas, so I was there recently at the end of January. And I was there. He was just outside of Houston. It was great. And I actually got to meet a YouTuber, Nicole Smith, at Nicole Smith Garden. So that was fun. Um, and then we had the opportunity to go to Disney in the fall. That was wonderful. So, but I do want to do more traveling. And I mean, I'll travel in New England. You know, there's a lot of great places. Uh, Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, Rhode Island. I grew up on the Massachusetts Rhode Island line, um, Connecticut. Have you always lived up in that area? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I grew up in a small town called Blackstone, Massachusetts. Um, when I lived there, I think the population was 8,000. It was in a very big town, but you know, it was. It was a good place to grow up uh, at that call of the ocean. Yeah. It, it wooed me and took me in, and I've been here on the Cape for, uh, I think, 37, 38 years. So, oh, wow. Yeah. And what you call here is the wash ashore. You know, I wasn't born here. That's a native. Even though I've been here most of my life, I'm still just a wash ashore. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome so um have you ever been outside of the united states traveled anywhere outside of the I united haven't. states i haven't not yet really? i'm ready i want to i want to go eat something good in europe <laughs> i know i would like to go to uh belgium or ireland oh that'd be fun yeah Ireland, southern France, Italy, I want to cry about. Yeah. What is your family heritage? Um, we are mostly French Canadian. Um, I think there's a little, mom used to say, you have this much Irish. <laughs> 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 um, and then, I think a great great grandmother actually came from Paris, but still in her oh. front. Yeah. Somewhere down in there. Huh. Yeah. Wow. That's cool. Yeah. I guess she had a very fancy wedding dress. That's hmm. all I know about her. <laughs> so besides gardening. And what are what are your hobbies? What do you like to do? Do you like to collect anything? Uh, you know, I have in the past. I'm trying to stay away from that. I'm trying to simplify my life. I was collecting um, vintage cocktail shakers for a while, and I have plenty of them downstairs. But you didn't. I never use them, so I should probably just sell them again and recap. Recoup, you know, get some money for them, but yeah. Uh, otherwise, no, no seeds. I collect a lot of seeds. <laughs> oh, that's that. gardening. Oops, you said besides gardening. Yeah. <laughs> so, are you seeing anyone? Are you married? I am happily single, and that's good. <laughs> How many kids do you have? I have two kids, five grandkids. Um, three of the grandkids live here on Cape. 
One's in Florida and one's in Texas. Awesome. And they range from, well, he'll be turning nine all the way to 22. Wow. Yeah. You still look young, though. You're probably I, what? I am. 45. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be 49 this year, so. You yeah, know, you yeah. I'm, a, I'm right. a little advanced on that. I'm 63 years young. <laughs> well, see, you're somewhere around my age. Actually, um, Jeff was born in 63, so he's 60. He'll be 61 this year. So you're real close to Jeff's age. Yeah, there you go. It's been a great life. Yep. Yeah. Jeff was born in 63. Okay. It was a good year. I was two. <laughs> <laughs> Jason says that he acts like he's 12, which. <laughs> Never act your age. I, That's I was going to say, I would, I would probably make him more like 14. He acts like he's 14. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> In my mind, I'm still 25, but my body says otherwise. <laughs> I hear that. So, um, do you have cocktails every now and then? I love cocktails. Okay, and, what's your and favorite wine and cocktail? Beer. Uh, margarita. margarita. Margarita? Margarita. I make it good. Plain though. margarita, strawberry margarita, any certain margarita? I like a classic, but I also, one of my favorite ones is a uh, caliente, which is, you hot. know, a caliente margarita, so hot. So you take a couple of slices of jalapeno and a couple of slices of cucumber, you muddle that, and then you build a drink on top of that. It's really good. Ooh. It's spicy, a little cooling from the cucumber, and it's as tasty as heck. Huh. Uh, but, you know, I don't like to limit myself just to margaritas. <laughs> so, do you plan on coming to Missouri anytime soon? Well, yeah, soon. I can't say soon. Uh, <laughs> you know how life gets complicated. and I know. But I, know. I, I would very much like things. to go to Missouri. So... We'll I'd like to make these. those cookies for you. If not, I'll oh, have yeah. to make them and send them to you. <laughs> I'd like to go collect them. i got to figure out, like, flights are so expensive. Or they were when I checked there. So i got to look at that again. But, yeah. Let's see. I'm trying to maybe. What's there to do in Missouri? Um, not a whole lot. Okay. It's a farm, a farmland for the most oh, part. <laughs> unless you, you know, um, go to one of the bigger cities like Columbia or Kansas City or St. Louis, you know, mm -hmm. then you can, you know, do all sorts of different stuff. But, um, let's see. Okay, Jason. Our okay. way? Missouri way? Or Rick's way. Um, he says I'll be heading that way in May, but I don't know if he means our way or your way. But um, let's see. Like Kansas City and St. Louis are both like three hours away from us. You oh, know? And yeah. so it's kind of a pain in the butt to want to go there and do anything, you know, especially with Hunter. You know, it's kind of if you go with Hunter, you'll you'd want to make it in overnight because of the ride and everything with him and stuff. So, yeah, yeah. but um, I don't know. Uh, Jeff, yeah, Jeff likes to trout fish, fly fish, oh, cool. and stuff down South Missouri, which is also like a three four hour drive. So we don't do that very often, but um, we do have Thomas Hill Lake, not too far from us. And I guess some people can pull up some really good sized catfish from that. Mm -hmm. um, Jeff used to work at the Thomas Hill Power Plant, which is why the lake was originally created. Um, mm -hmm. 
So, but yeah, um, if you come and visit us, we could always take you fishing and if I let come you to visit just to see you guys and whatever happens, happens. And yeah. I'm pretty easy when it comes to that. Yeah. My son, um, even when I was busy, my son, what do you want to do? I'm like, just hang out. It's fine. <laughs> you know, I came here to see you. I didn't came and run around like a nut. Right. So. Yeah. Um, I'm wanting to build a pallet cabin and kind of, you know, oh, have cool. it yeah. for people to stay in. It, do like a lot of solar type stuff. And so maybe if it's done this year, right. I doubt it will be. Because we've got like 10,000 other things in the fire. But. Yeah, a little <laughs> bit, huh? <laughs> Hi, Annette. How are you? Hey, Annette. Annie. How's Australia doing? She's not three-legged. She still has four legs. And she's actually getting around pretty good. She is just... We can't ever breed her or anything like that because her hips and stuff won't be able to take it. Who's that? Um, earlier this past year, uh, well, August or whenever we had the calves born, um, my milk cow, first time mom, ended up stepping on her baby, um. stepped on her hip. And when she stepped on her hip, it kind of shattered her pelvic area and stuff a little bit. And so we took her to the vet and um, she, uh, the vet said that she'll never be able to be bred. Okay. And so I don't, I pretty much have a pet because, you know, I can't breed her to have another milk cow or anything or to make her a milk cow. And so, yeah. So. Do you keep the bulls separate, generally? Or do you um, have a bull, right? Well, the milk cows we have, the milk cow we have AI'd. Oh, okay. Because okay, okay. we only have yeah. we only have the one, but our other cows, um, the neighbor brings down a bull and he puts one of his bulls in with our girls mm -hmm. to breed them. Um, because he always has a whole bunch of cows next to us and we don't want to keep a bull because if he walks through the fence and breeds coolies whenever coolie isn't wanting them to, then it could cause some neighbor problems. And so, right, right, right. <laughs> so could you just grow her for me or I could, just... yeah, but. I don't I don't know what I don't know what to do with her. I mean my you know, I mean there's no point in keeping her around, you know, if she's not gonna, you know, do anything for the farm. But yeah, yeah, Joyce and Cooley, they've got I'm um, tons of cows. Tons, tons. Three hundred, yeah, that's a lot of cows. Yeah. I don't think there's three hundred cows entirely on the Cape. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there might be. It's, uh, agriculture is really hard to do on the Cape because you can't afford the land. And most right. of the farms have been broken up, you know. But there's still some, and there's still, you know, some really enterprising people doing some really cool things. Oh, wow. Yeah, so. Um, what do they grow? What is the agriculture in your area? It's mostly in market farming. You know, there's like, you know, I think the biggest farm we have is 90 acres and he's only using a portion of that. And that's because that's a, technically a county farm that they have um, leased to one of my favorite farmers, but you know, I'm glad he got it. And he mostly grows CSA and does some restaurant work. Uh, there are people who raise beef and pork and all of that, but it's very expensive because, again, you know, it's it's hard to do it profitably. Yeah. Yeah. So what is the weather like there for, like, most of the year? 
Okay, so I'm actually zone 7A, which is hard to believe for up north. And actually, if you go east another two towns, there's 7B, and that's this with the new uh, rating. So because we're a peninsula, we tend to have mild summers and warmer winters because the water oh, insulates wow. it. So the water gradually gets warmer during the summer, and that's when all the tourists come. But, you know, it stays warm and keeps us warmer during, you know, when in the fall and in, into the winter. Um, we could be anywhere from 10 to 12 degrees cooler than Maine, mainly in Massachusetts. And anywhere maybe 5 to 10 degrees. And it depends. Sometimes it's much more, you know, warmer than the rest of Massachusetts. And, you know, friend, but it's like New England is such, you know, so we're a 7A, 7B. And six, and as you go north, when you're getting into Maine, you're in like zones four and three, and you know, so it gets really wow. cold north Maine and Vermont. Wow. Yeah, but we it was pretty mild. We only got I, I think you had much colder weather than I got this year for sure. I mean, we had one little negative cold snap, but it was maybe like negative six. That was the color of yeah. the thing, and that was one day. Um, yeah, we had several days in a row where it was like negative 20. Yeah. You know, it, was, it was cold. <laughs> well, I remember, and this is really going back a long time, but like 25, 30 years ago, we had the canal, the Cape Cod Canal, that, you know, that's so it's a shipping lane and we have two bridges that's the only way on and off cape cod is two bridges but that canal one year froze solid i had never seen that and i have never seen it since but it was frozen and the ship's going to go through what yeah and i think it was the early 1800s it was so cold here that you could take a sleigh from Hyannis to, uh, to Nantucket, the ocean froze, that's how cold it was. And that's a two hour ferry ride. <laughs> I guess you could probably get across there pretty fast on a sleigh. <laughs> yeah, probably, I wouldn't <laughs> want to try it. <laughs> but, uh, apparently those crazy people back then, like, hey, let's go, go see our friends in Nantucket. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, imagine, but yeah, that's just crazy history. That's but awesome. really is mild. I love history, though. So uh, there's a lot of it here. You know, my town is three hundred over three hundred and fifty years old. Yeah. So it's been here for a long time. <laughs> yeah, uh, Jeff and I, uh, we have both we both have relatives that uh came from salem back in the day so yeah yeah we talked about that that's really people. interesting yeah, um, yeah. I, if, I'll, if i find the books i'll send you the last names and you can see if you've heard of anybody with those last names you, you tell me i'll have to find the books again yeah there was one that was familiar but you told me once i can't remember now yeah i yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so we talked about travel. What's your favorite food? Your favorite, absolute favorite food? All of them. Um, I usually default to lobster. Um, yeah. You know, I like food. I would say lobster is actually my favorite too, but it's expensive <laughs> here, like really expensive here. Well, I mean, I love lobster, but I mean, I like a good tomato sandwich in the summer too. Uh, I just love food. <laughs> yeah, I'll go with lobster. What's your favorite food? Um, probably like steak and lobster. Like a steak and lobster. Meal. No, one. I can only have one. You can only have one. 
<laughs> you said absolute favorite. Okay, probably lobster then. I love okay. I, I love lobster. <laughs> yeah. Alex. You getting tired? Because you are uh, an hour ahead of us, so it would be I eight to forty your time. Today, yesterday it was what seven forty. Yeah, it would have been <laughs> seven forty your time. <laughs> yeah, Jeff said any kind of food. Yeah, and much. Jason said this week my favorite food is wild berry skittles. <laughs> <laughs> uh, straight up, or did he put them in the freeze dryer? Do you have a freeze dryer? No, it said him. I don't have one now. Yeah, I think Jason. I I know we've got a freeze dryer, but I don't. I think Jason's I got a freeze dryer, but I don't know. Jason, do you have a freeze dryer? I don't remember. Actually, no, I don't think they do because I okay. think we told them to bring stuff with them and that we would put that stuff in the freeze dryer for That's them. Cool. So, yeah, yeah. yeah, I don't think they've got a freeze dryer. But you know dang well, he says I wish. <laughs> yeah, you know dang well. If you ever want anything freeze dried, all you have to do is let us know, and we'll freeze dry <laughs> something and send it to you. <laughs> there you go. Uh, so, uh, yeah, what so did you things. think of your new toy that Jeff sent you? Oh, it's really cool. I like it. Came out really neat. I just okay herbs. You got to start growing. I got an herb stripper. Yeah, Jeff is really cool. He sent me a stripper. <laughs> <Woo -hoo! laughs> there you go honey <laughs> you sent rick a stripper <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness um it's a really yeah, quick show uh, though they come in handy you know i mean i've got this one here that I plan on using this summer for mine, yeah. and so you know, uh -huh, mine's yeah, just a on. simple gray. I think he sent you one of the colored ones. And if Gary and Cindy come in, I need them to answer my email. I yeah, there's yours. That is so pretty. Yeah, isn't it cool? Yeah. Yeah, I just use this part all the time. Time I like uh -huh. that. Yeah. Yeah, he makes his wooden ones just like that. So cool. I don't know. Well, I got a lot of these little wooden one. I've seen them on on the Etsy shop and somewhere. Okay, so you got yeah. you got one of the I got the uh, spatula turners, spatula, whatever you call it. Yeah. And then the the uh three D printed herb stripper. Jeff, that question would be for you, Darwin, because I have no idea. Uh, filaments. KLA. So do you eat, like, a lot of, you know, organic foods and stuff up there, or... Um, like I grow organically. My chickens are organic. I don't. I don't strictly eat organic. I can't afford to. I right. like. I would like to get. You know, I try to get as much as I can organically. I do fine with it. You know, for myself growing and it's a lot what more kind expensive. Of, uh, preservation methods do you use? Either I freeze or right now I have a water bathing, you know, water bath canner. I am planning on getting a pressure canner and just deciding how much I want to spend on one. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. I mean, is the Presto one that's, you know, cheaper, good enough, or do I have to go for the American one that's like $400? So, oh, wow. Yeah, I don't think I want to spend that much, but we'll see. You know, if I'll do my research and figure out what's the best option. 
Yeah, um, I think the pressure canners that we have are like ancient, old, you know, I mean, I don't even know where we got them, but they work. Yeah, exactly. So does yours have a rubber gasket? Yeah, okay, yeah. Yep. Um, They're talking about um, just the, it's a different filaments for uh, the 3D printer. Mm -hmm. um, some filaments is stronger than others and, you know, hold up better under different conditions and stuff than others. And so, yeah, hi, Josh. Josh. How are you doing tonight, Mr. Josh? Does anybody have any questions for Rick that I have not asked? Josh, you'll have to go back and watch the rest of it later. We learned a lot tonight about Cape Cod and all of that. Mr. Rick is pretty awesome. He lives in an awesome area. Yeah, I'm blessed. You know, any place, I mean, I'm fascinated by, you know, you basically have a ranch over there and you guys have a, many things I'm envious, you know, and you put your own meat in the freezer. I wish I could do that. I can put clams, but you know, you gotta kill a lot of clams to fill a freezer. True. True. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe we can figure out some way one of these days to overnight you some of our fresh beef and you can figure out how to overnight mm. us some fresh clam or lobster or something like that. Yeah, if I have to go down, I'll bring some with me for sure. And do that. Awesome. When I visit my son, I just cook it up and freeze the meat and bring it on the plane with me. Huh. Wow. That is awesome. If I get there, I'll make your lobster roll. Okay, Jason wants to know, how often do you get hit with storms? Um, you know, it's been raining for days now, but... um. We get nor'easters, and you you see them in the news. We tend to get a lot of wind storms because we're on the ocean. So if it's like gusts up to 20 on the mainland, we're, we're probably facing 30, 40, you know. Wow. Many storms, uh, you know, it's not uncommon to have like wind gusts up to 60 miles an hour. I mean, but we haven't had... Knock on wood. Any major, <laughs> major storms. I've been through a couple of hurricanes and some big, like, blizzardy nor'easters, and yeah, it's okay. And I'm feeling a little secure because last year we put in a um, generator, so we're all set if the power goes off. Um, it's connected to natural gas, so as long as everything's running, it just clicks on, so. Awesome. Yeah. And that comes into play if I ever do get into the meat chickens, then I will guarantee that I can keep them, you know, frozen during a bad storm. He says, is it also like Florida and rain every day? Oh, generally not. We just had a rainy a rainy week last week it finally cleared up today so that's nice god the chicken run is like a swamp right now yeah. but, but even from this morning it's drained a lot and it's a lot less squishy so and i have a lot of wood chip there so i'm not too too concerned um tornadoes we don't get often i mean they hit and it's usually tiny ones, you know, water spouts once in a while. I've never seen one personally, and that's good. You know, but, yeah. Uh, we get like, what do they call them? Something 
something cell where we'll have like mini little tornadoes and you know they'll like maybe t take out a street or something you know it's usually not bad and it's usually just like tree damage um, i don't think we've lost anybody to any of those fortunately okay jason wants to know are there any poisonous animals or bugs that you have to worry about up in your neck of the woods uh on the you can find, which one is it? A water moccasin once in a while up in New England. There's the timber rattlesnakes. I don't know that there's any on the Cape. I mean, there could be, and it's probably not. Um, and like a brown recluse, although not native to the area, may have traveled with people and that has happened, but generally speaking, I can't think of anything particularly venomous. That's probably something in the ocean. Um, Do you have any like jellyfish that wash up on shore? Uh, or? Yeah, over here of a Portuguese man of war. We get those once in a while. These are oh, wow. enormous, enormous jellyfish, and they're deadly. They really are. Um, wow. Even when they're washed up on the shore, you don't want to touch them. You just call somebody. Uh, I haven't seen, I mean, I've seen the little jellyfish and they can sting you, but they're not bad. I've never seen the man of war other than, you know, in the newspaper or on Facebook that somebody found one on the beach. Beautiful animals though. They're like purple and pink and they look gorgeous, but they're deadly. <laughs> Do you have any, like, you know, sharks or anything? Oh, we have lots of sharks. Really? Yes, we do. We are. So part of the, yeah, Cape has sharks. And more so now than ever before, you know, because they have less seals to eat or whatever. And then actually the seal population is growing too, and that might be part of it. But it's a breeding ground for sharks up this way in the summer. Wow. So you have to just be smart. Um, it's more the outer banks that are going, you know, the outer beaches that are going to hit the, you know, be affected by the sharks, but they could be anywhere. You kind of don't want to go in in that dawn or dusk. Uh, those are prime times for sharks to come closer to the uh, the shores. Um, and this How been close some tax. to the shores they get? Close enough to bite you. Um, <laughs> no, they, they'll come into the beaches, people like surfers generally, you know, or kayakers. Because, you know, to a shark, they just say, oh, that's a big seal. You know, they're not knowing what they're attacking, but they will. And some of those suckers are big. <laughs> Do they have like shark hunting up in your area? Or shark fishing, I guess. Yeah, you can. Yeah, I don't know the rules or what there are for rules, but it's. I think it is allowed. Um, but you know, they're part of the ecology. They belong. They have a right to the ocean too. Right. Uh, so. Jason said, uh, "Don't sharks beach themselves trying to get seals?" They can, yep, or uh, sometimes they'll go in an inlet that they shouldn't and be stuck, uh, you know, in a saltwater pond, it's happened. Generally, you know, people will try to direct them back into the ocean. Uh, yeah, they do, they'll, the worst is like when you're pulling in your fish on the fishing pole, <laughs> they just chomp on it. Has that happened to you? No. I haven't <laughs> been fishing in a long time. <laughs> I got it, it's kind of one of the things I want to take up because I love striped bass and all you have to do is go to the beach and hope for the best, you know, and do surf casting, but it's, it's on the list of things to do. And striped bass- Do you have any boardwalks in your area oh, yeah. that kind of go out over the ocean? Um, yeah, but not like 
not any of the ones that are big enough to have like an amusement park or anything on it. Right, right. Uh, the, this boardwalk pass going through the dunes, um, piers, of course, and those kind of, and boat docks. Um, yeah, we have some of that, but not like, you know, oh, what's the one I went to one in California and that's like, wow, <laughs> you know, it was on the ocean, but they literally had an amusement park and all sorts of things, you know, and Galveston's like that too, huh. down in Texas. Do you have your own boat? I don't, I don't, maybe someday, but I know people, <laughs> I know people. <laughs> Yeah, well, you probably wouldn't live in where you live. You probably know your neighbors pretty well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I have some friends with boats, so. They don't know you yet, but they're taking me fishing this summer. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions for Rick before we let him go? He, Jason said it's much much easier to know people, no maintenance. <laughs> true, true. And boats aren't cheap either. And then in, in, in the maintenance no. at the top of it. And then what do you, you know, the docking and the, yeah, it's, it's money. Yeah, if you don't own beach property and have your own dock, it could be pretty expensive. Yeah, well, there's always right away. We have right aways where you can go, you know, bring your boat down and there's public ways to the beach and where you can launch your boats, but not necessarily parking included. It is for me because I live in town. So we buy a recreational parking sticker basically it gets us into the beaches and for free and all of that stuff. So if Jeff and I ever come and visit you, we just leave our vehicle parked at your house and take your vehicle. And yeah, we all absolutely. Down to the yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that's what people do. Here, <laughs> I'm going to be in work, take the car or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it has been amazing talking to you and so learning nice. about you and your area and your life and it's just it's been awesome i love it uh thanks it was fun i always like chatting with you anyways yeah i didn't have to type this <laughs> week <laughs> <laughs> well you take care of yourself darling and i will go ahead and let you go uh jason says i just imagined everybody was driving around in golf carts uh no that's more florida i mean there there are some like it's like trailer parks where they do that, but yeah, generally not on the roads. Massachusetts likes to regulate too much to allow that. Jeff says, we'll be seed starting pretty soon, Rick. Have a good evening. Good to see you. Yeah, okay. I'll step out and I'm going to do a couple of things. i got to go throw some laundry and I'll step back into the chat in a bit. Thank you, Wendy. Okay. You're welcome, hon. Thanks, folks. <laughs> you have a good night. You too. Okay, that was Mr. Rick from My Cape Cod Life. Let's see, how do I get this overlay off? There we go. But, you know, Rick is a very interesting person. We always, whenever we do something new Jeff always thinks of Rick and you know sending him something to try or start at or start or you know something like that and so you know I've sent Rick some seeds and um, Jeff sent Rick one of his wooden spatulas and one of the uh, oh the herb strippers and then um, we've sent Rick some uh, freeze-dried skittles for his grandkids and so but um if uh, Gary and Cindy from Pathways, if you guys end up watching this, hopefully you'll be in soon. But if you end up watching this, I did send you an email asking for your address because I have something that I am wanting to send you. I don't know where I misplaced it. Oh, never mind. It's in a box. Jeff already boxed it up. So 
if uh, yeah, you guys end up watching this, I sent you an email. Um, email me or call me or whatever you need to do so I can get your address to send that to you. So, so Jason, how are you and Beth doing this week? You guys doing pretty good? I wouldn't mind getting you and Beth up on panel one of these days. Talk about your life and your little homesteadish thing that you do. Not a whole lot of people know about the things that you do at your place, Jason. See, you've got a 3D printer and a laser printer or laser, laser something. I don't know if they're called laser printers or what they're called, but. But yeah, we'll be, as Jeff said, we'll be starting our seeds before too long. And I should have already had my stratification going, but I don't. So that's, I know my cactuses are begging to be put out, but I know we're still going to have a freeze or a frost or something come in and I actually had to bring the aloe vera upstairs and set it by the door because it kind of wasn't doing the best but I've got one cactus downstairs that's begging for I don't know real light or more light or or something so but every year I stuff them downstairs in the basement and they do fine because I put them right below that one uh window and so but <laughs> I know you don't do that. Hi, Rebecca. Yeah, that's kind of with us. We usually don't put anything outside until mid-April. And then we still have to keep a close eye on it because we could still get a freeze clear up until May. And so we have to be real careful about when we put stuff out. Sad thing is, is all of our fruit trees are budding. Every single one of them. And... I know we're going to be getting another hard freeze, which means we're going to have absolutely no fruit this year because it's going to freeze the buds and that's going to be that. Um, last year we had no pears, not a single one because of the freeze. And luckily we did have a few, you know, other small fruits, but um, not like I wish we would have. Yeah, we had to replant the entire garden. It it wasn't good. Wasn't good at all. <laughs> um, our horseradish is already starting to come up outside the back door. So, yeah, it's just is. I don't think it's going to be a real good year as far as. Uh, berries and um, it might not affect the berries too bad but I don't know some of the trees are pretty big I don't know <laughs> hi KJ how are you doing darling How are you and dragonflies tonight? Yeah, KJ, Jeff watches you every single day. Nice to see you, hon.
I watch a lot of people off and on. It's just most of the time I just don't even say hi. I just kind of watch for a little while and then I have to get off and do whatever it is I'm doing. But <laughs> hey, at least she's telling you to go to the bunker and not the doghouse. I the bunker would probably be more uh comfortable than the doghouse. <laughs> See, poor Jeff. I I couldn't tell him to go to the bunker or the doghouse because we don't have either one. So. <laughs> he rarely gets on my nerves, though. I think his hearing. His hearing is probably the one thing that maybe does kind of get on my nerves from time to time. Bunker, doghouse, outhouse, all the same. <laughs> He's got bad hearing, and so a lot of times he doesn't hear what I say or, you know, or how I say something or something like that. And so that's kind of nerve wracking from time to time, but it's not his fault. He worked in the power plant for numerous years, and just the constant machines and the the buzzing of the machines and the vibrations and stuff of the machines ruined his hearing. True. Yeah. I could tell him, you know, we could get his office cleaned up a little bit more. That's another thing I've been very slowly working on is cleaning up his office a little bit. Selective hearing. <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> I think it happens to all of us. <laughs> But yeah, um, let's see. Uh, I think that's really, you know, it. You know, he's been working on his herb strippers, making the plastic herb strippers this week. And I've been, you know, working on making my headache box to try to sell to help people that have headaches, like I do. You can kind of see mine setting in. I've been watching it. You can kind of just tell by the look on my face how it sets in. But, but I don't know. I mean, it almost looks bruised, but. No, not really. I've got a lot of stuff in the freezer, though, that um, I actually need to can because I've got everything for the jalapeno relish that Josh and Chef like and so honestly I, I really need to get that stuff canned up and then I've got some strawberries and stuff in the freezer also that I need to get out of there and make jams and stuff out of just to get it you know out of the freezer and onto the shelves but hi Eddie Slate coasters and wood animal magnets. Well, that's awesome. Herbs. That entire wall, except for the, the uh, half gallon jars. The half gallon jars are teas that I've made, but all the rest of it is nothing but herbs. I mean, different types of herbs for anything, everything, you name it, it's almost up there. And if it's not, I actually ran out of room. And so I actually have herbs that I don't have behind me. I've got, uh, well, I've got some here. And then I've got um, one of these totes here up at the very top that is also full of herbs that are different from the herbs there and so i have a lot of herbs yes i've got um a closet that is right beside the door okay let me see here okay there's the door well a little bit more that way is my closet 
and I've got yes, I've got I've got chamomile. Um, I don't have it for sale right now, but I do have chamomile. And if you wanted some, I could easily send you some chamomile. And if you want the chamomile mixed with you know, a green tea or something like that, I can do that too. Or if you just want plain chamomile, I can do that too. So, I mean, it's just, if you want something, just contact me and I do it. Um, like uh, the wormwood tincture. Um, a woman in um, Indiana wanted me to make the wormwood tincture. And so I will have it up on my Etsy store soon. And then, um, okay, okay, um, KJ, email me your address and I'll send you some. Okay, Rick, but, um, a lot of people, they use, uh, like, some of my wild lettuce for sleep too but that helps you sleep pretty sound so if you don't want to sleep really sound then i'd say more of a chamomile or something like that just kind of a relaxing sleep and not a sleep so okay just plain chamomile tea then okay just email me your um uh, Address Willoway Ranch at yahoo.com. Okay, KJ. I will await your email, and as soon as I get your email, I will uh, package some up and get it sent to you. Yeah, Jeff has taken the wild lettuce before. I've taken it before too. And then, um, no, Joshua. It is not the devil's lettuce. It is wild lettuce, like lettuce that grows in the garden, but wild. Good night, KJ. But, um, yeah, uh, a two by four. <laughs> you have a good night, KJ. Give dragonflies hugs for us. I know, Josh. But I've taken uh, my royal pain tincture before um, for my liver pain. There was one night where it was hurting so bad I couldn't sleep. And so I took some of my royal pain tincture. And it eased, eased the pain enough that I was able to sleep. And so that was nice. But it's got blue lotus in it. And so blue lotus is banned from Louis the state of Louisiana. So if somebody lives in Louisiana and buys one of my royal pain tinctures, I have to deny that sale because I could get in trouble for selling it. Because even though it's not pure blue lotus, it is, you know, a tincture mixed with other herbs, it still has blue lotus in it. And so I cannot sell to anyone in the state of Louisiana, which is really weird. Because you think about it, Louisiana, New Orleans, voodoo, voodoo magic. So, I mean... They probably got all sorts of herbs and stuff down there that I have never even heard of. Hi, Des. How you doing, darling? Goldenrod, Josh. Wasn't it Goldenrod? Dang, Des, you're hopping tonight.
Josh, I swore we had, I, I swore you said it was goldenrod. I might, but I don't know, maybe it was something else. Let's see. Hmm. Don't make me get up and look at my C's. Comfrey? No. Comfrey, cinnamon. Calendula? Could have been calendula. Calendula, California poppy, cardamom, carabine, carrots, catnip, catawba, chamomile, chase berry, chickweed, cinnamon, 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 cleaver, clove, cramp bark, and that's all I have in seas. Well, I'm not having seas up there. I've got more in those containers, but which one? Catnip? Which one? Now you got me curious. <laughs> I see is her cookie. <laughs> Coffee, there you go. The coal one, say it again. Colindula? Yeah, I'll take a cup of coffee, darling. The calendula. Jeff, uh, Jason said that he'll take a cup of coffee too. And I think Josh said yes on that also. <laughs> so three coffees, please. Let's see, I have got a list of, I actually have a list of all the herbs I have, including the ones up there. And so, um, let's bring up my C's. Kalia Zakatechi, I, I don't know that one, but uh, Calendula, California Poppy, Cardamom, Carabine, cat, Carrot, Catnip, Cat Claw Bark, Catawba, cayenne, uh, shepar shepar leaf, chaste berry, chickweed, um, chamomile flowers, cinnamon, cleavers, clove, cardicep, corn flour, cramp bark, and cumin. Those are all of my uh, C's. That's not ever all of them, but that's all my C's. Josh doesn't drink coffee, so Des said that she'll take Josh's. <laughs> Rick says he'll take a cup. <laughs> you should put it in my uh, Welcome to Cape Cod Life cup, coffee cup. since I did interview Mr. Welcome to My Cape Cod Life tonight. But I might get you up here for an interview one of these nights, Josh, and then another night get a uh, big grovel Jason up here if, you know, he'll take the begging and groveling. 
<laughs> you are just a sweetheart, Rick. We love you so much. <laughs> you are always in our thoughts and our prayers, buddy. We love you. But um, I need to do something with uh, those one of these days. I keep wanting to. I just never get around to it. I have had that one placemat thing started for before this office was done. So for about a year. Hmm. Yeah, I think Hunter had was messing with my magnets a couple days ago because I noticed that normally I keep yours at top and I noticed yours had been moved kind of down towards the bottom and I was like, Hunter Allen. So I moved yours back up where I had it. But I think I am going to go ahead and get off of here for tonight. And so, Rick, I thank you so much for the interview. Um, we learned so much about you, and I loved, you know, your, I love where you live. You know, it's just, it is, it is awesome. And so. Thank you for coffee. Thank you. You had really your $60 cup. <laughs> <laughs> He's never gonna let me live that down. <laughs> he said he already had it brewed in this cup and stuff, so he wasn't able to brew it in bricks, but <laughs> I can't help it. I love my sixty dollar cup. I mean it has like raised raised bees. It's awesome. And look at that handle. I mean, like serious, isn't that beautiful? So But yeah, he's never going to let me live that one down. So you are very welcome, hun. We love you. So everybody have a good night. And I will see you all later next Sunday. As long as everything goes well and I don't have a throbbing headache. Tonight, it's annoying. And I already took four ibuprofen before. So I don't know. We'll just see what happens. But hopefully my headaches relax and but mm, hormones gotta love them. Anyway, I love you guys. Whatever, Joshua. You used to come up on here with me almost every single night, and then I don't know what happened, but something changed and you don't do it anymore. But Thank you, Des. You have a good night, darling. But um, everybody have a good week. Everybody stay safe and be careful and be healthy. And so stay curious, stay kind, stay subscribed. Whoa.